Hello, welcome to the POP online training modules on using POP tools Cube. My name is Bernd Moore from the Uli Silber Computing Center. In this module, I will show you how to analyze copy profiles or Scalaska trace profiles of HPC applications with a POP tool Cube. If you want to follow along, what do you need? You should have access to an HPC cluster or a Linux workstation or laptop with a POP Tools Cube and Scalaska installed. Uh, if you don't have them installed, please uh, see our other online training module on installing the uh, Cube and Scalaska tools. Before we can use them, we have to be uh, in the execution path. This can be done by adding the bin subdirectories of the tool installation prefixes in the environment variable dollar path. You also should have a measurement of a parallel application performed with Scopy uh, in Scalaska. If you don't have one, don't have one. Again, please look on our online training module on how to use the Scopy and Scalaska tools. This diagram shows you the typical performance analysis workflow, uh, which I in introduced in the uh, online training module on using the Scopy and Scalaska tools. Yeah, it has the phases instrumentation, measurement, and an analysis. And there I uh, covered already the instrumentation measurement phase. In this module now, we concentrate on analysis phase, especially yeah, I show you how to use the Cube browser uh, and how to analyze the results of the measurements. Scopy and Scalaska collect a lot of data in various files in, in order to make that more manageable. All the data for one experiment is called uh, is stored in a subdirectory, which we call the exper experiment directory. Uh, this has uh, the name uh, scorep underscore the name of executable, then some indication of the size of a measurement, and then followed by either sum, indicating it's a profile. Uh, measurement or trace if it's a trace experiment. So as an example here, yeah, you know, like uh, Scopy T leaf 2P8 times X trace means it was a Scopy measurement of, of a T leaf application executed on uh, two nodes with eight processes each with the 12 threads and it was a trace experiment. If you look inside with experiment directory, you will find all kind of uh, configuration and log files, but also cube files, which are the, the main measurement data. You can easily recognize them by the prefix .cubex, which indicates the cube4 profile format. They typically come in four forms called profile, summary, scout, and trace cubex. So what's the difference? Uh, profile.cubex is the Scorpi raw profile measurement and scout cubex is the result of a Scalaska trace analyzer. Uh, these contain a lot, uh, already a lot of information and you can analyze them, but I suggest that you actually uh, post-process these files, uh, which in turn turn them into uh, a file summary.cubex or trace cubex. And in this post-processing, additional derived metrics get calculated offline and also the metrics hierarchy get enhanced. Uh, so they are much more uh, easy to uh, analyze and uh, understand because they contain uh, more information. So I suggest uh, that you concentrate uh, on the summary and trace uh, files. Why is uh, the data called cube and also the, the tool called cube? This comes from the fact that we, uh, that we measure lots of different metrics, uh, how long something uh, is executing, how often it was executed, uh, specific values like the number of cache misses or the number of bytes transmitted for every call path in the uh, program and for every place in, in the system. So this creates a three-dimensional structure, yeah, uh, like a three-dimensional matrix, and each point in that matrix says this is this metric for this call path on that system location. And because a three-dimensional structure, so this is a cube, this is why the format is called cube, but also the tool is called cube. In addition of being three-dimensional, uh, 
we can also see that the three axes uh, spanning this three-dimensional structure are organized in hierarchies. You have a call tree, uh, naturally is a hierarchy. Uh, you have main calling functions, which in turn uh, call more functions, which uh, include uh, loops and so on. The system uh, location is also hierarchically a machine, contains multiple nodes. Uh, on every node you have multiple processes executing, and in the case of a multi-threaded program, each process has multiple threads. The metrics we also organize in a, in a hierarchy from more general metrics to uh, very specific ones, uh, as you will see later in the demo. So in order to now navigate through these thousands of values, uh, we use uh, three coupled tree browsers. So each tree browser controls one axis, and by navigating through that tree, you can select uh, which metric uh, call path or uh, system location you want to look at. Uh, yeah. As an example, uh, on, on the, uh, down here on the right, you see like a very simple call tree. Um, uh, it's currently just showing uh, basically the main program itself. Um, and in front of the, the name of a node, you see the, 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 the metric uh, value associ associated with it. In this case, it's, it's 100. And there's also like a little uh, square with a color in it and the, the color is indicating how uh, high the value is. It uses a, a, a color map from like low values, uh, blue and green, to very high values, uh, red and orange. So this allows you to quickly spot uh, very high values in, in larger trees. Uh, because it's a tree, we can basically look at the subcomponents of a tree and we can uh, open that up. Uh, here you see basically main is, is calling uh, foo and bar. Uh, but the second thing you probably noticed is the, the value changes. So the value 100 from main changes to uh, a 10. What does that mean? Um, in the collapsed uh, way, like this way, uh, it basically the value indicates the inclusive value. Basically, this means the, the value of that metric for main and all what it includes. If we open it up, it shows the exclusive value, yeah, because foo and bar by themselves use 30 and 60 units, it leaves only 10 for main itself, and this is the exclusive value. And uh, so, this way, you can easily browse uh, the values in these trees. On the trees, you basically have two commands. Uh, one I just explained to you, it's basically expanding and collapsing tree nodes. Um, and this allows you to choose the level of granular granularity or detail you want to uh, look at. Uh, if you have a large tree and you want to uh, look at the whole tree, you can also use the context menu to actually expand or collapse the whole tree or subtree. The second operation you can do on the trees is uh, selecting a specific node, and then this uh, uh, makes it that the, the metric value of that node is shown in the next tree and how it's distributed on the next level. Uh, uh, you can use control click to select multiple nodes. Um, again, you will see this uh, very uh, nicely how it works in the demo uh, later. How do you start the cube GUI? Um, in the local scenario case where you do everything on the HPC cluster or everything on your uh, workstation, you just call the square command from Skalaska with a name of the experiment directory you want to analyze. This does uh, post-processing of the files in there if necessary um, and then calls the cube GUI on on the generated post-processed uh, uh, cube file. It would be the trace cube file if it's a trace experiment and the summary uh, file if it's a, uh, a profile experiment. In case you working remotely, it means you do uh, measurements on a remote HPC system, um, but you sit basically at your workstation uh, locally, you can do that by on the remote system calling square minus s of experiment directory, which does the post-processing, but doesn't uh, try to uh, start up the cube GUI. 
then you can go into the experiment directory, copy the desired cube file to your local system, and then there just use a cube on that cube file to look at it. Okay, uh, it's probably easier to understand uh, if you see a demo. Uh, I want to show you the uh, measurement uh, of a tea leaf uh, application which solves the linear 2D heat conduction equation and if you want to uh, perform the measurements yourself here's the link to the uh, source code uh, where you can download it. We also provide uh, with, uh, my measurement uh, cube file as part of this online training module. So the measurements were done on uh, the Eureka cluster in our Uli Supercomputing Center. I used uh, eight MPI ranks with each had 12 open P threads and they were uh, distributed over four compute nodes, uh, two ranks per node. Okay, let's uh, look at the demo. Okay, this is basically how uh, the tool comes up. Here is the three tree browsers. The left one is uh, showing the metrics, the middle is showing the call tree, and the right is the system. Um, let me see here, when you go on the top, uh, yeah, like that the program used a total of 9972 seconds to execute uh, for that program on the machine. Uh, if you want to now look at details, uh, we can do that by uh, changing the granularity, like on the machine. Yeah, we can open it up, and now we see uh, the four nodes uh, I was using, and by looking at the values, you see they are all very similar, which means basically every node executed roughly the same uh, amount, or took exactly uh, uh, the same amount of time. And we open up uh, the nodes, we see the eight MPI ranks. Again, we see that the execution was uh, very balanced and everyone uh, took the same time. Uh, we can open up further, uh, or yeah, as I said, we can take uh, the context menu, expand collapse, uh, expand all, so we get the full tree. You know, but you see, uh, as long as you don't running a very small experiment, uh, this goes very quickly. Uh, Basically, on that level, you typically use a different way to look at the different uh, values by clicking here on the statistics tab in the system tree, and then you see uh, a box plot of a distribution. And now we see here that the values are very uh, close together, running between 103.8 seconds to 103.9 seconds. Uh, you have also a violin plot which shows you uh, more information uh, about the distribution and so on, what, what you prefer. Another way to look at the data is on the right side going here to topologies and then it shows you it like uh, uh, graphically. Um, here we see that the x-axis like from left to right shows the different processes and uh, this way are the different threads. If you are interested in a specific one, like you can click on it. Uh, uh, with the right mouse button, and then basically says, uh, this is uh, process two, thread number one, on which node, and you see exact value. Again here, because this uh, execution is very uh, uh, well balanced, uh, we don't see a lot of differences. If there would be differences, you would equally see them. Uh, in order, if you want to go back to the other one, you go back to system view and then either go to system tree or uh, statistics. Yeah, let's basically go to the uh, MPI level. Okay. If you want to uh, see basically not the values of a whole program, but for uh, but the subparts, we can basically open it up. So uh, by opening it up, we quickly uh, see like where the most time is spent by following uh, and looking the more uh, higher uh, colors. So he here's the on the bottom of the of the tool, you see the, the the color scale. Like blue is very low to red on the right side is very high. So we see here uh, the diffuse function of tea leaf takes most of the time. Uh, if you go up, the diffuse does various things. It calls tea leaf in the middle, which is the main thing, and and when tea leaf calls these three kernels, and the three kernels uh, 
contain each a loop and this is basically where all the execution time is happening. Yeah. By selecting it, uh, uh, one loop, or actually uh, you can select all of them by control clicking on them. Uh, on the bottom you see the combined value, which is like 8600 or 86%, uh, so basically means 86% of the time the function is executing in these loops, so in, if you want to optimize that you should look at uh, these uh, three loops but they are very well balanced. Uh, it's just like, yeah, uh, on, on, on some ranks it's 65 up to uh, uh, 84, so it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's basically very little uh, load imbalance. We can also explore uh, the metrics hierarchy, so we can open up the, the execution time, which says now, okay, uh, but uh, like the 9,972 uh, splits actually 9,116 uh, 9, real execution time and as I just showed you the main uh, time spent with programs in these three uh, loops. Uh, if you just consider execution time itself, actually 94% of the uh, execution is, is done in these three loops. Uh, uh, this measurement didn't contain over overhead, but idle threads. So idle threads mean uh, if you run a multi-threaded program, if some things are only done on the master thread, like MPI uh, calls, uh, the other threads are idling. Um, and by selecting it and, and looking at the numbers, we quick can quickly see the places in the program that is happening. Yeah, here you see it's in the update halo function and in the uh, T uh, awesome function when we open that up. Uh, yeah, you see here, like in the first case, is the MPI rate all of the T exchange called from update halo. And in the second case, it's an all reuse inside uh, that. Um, but uh, as we see here, idle threads, it's about 9% uh, of a program uh, uh, on that configuration with uh, 12 threads, it's hardly uh, uh, to avoid because even little execution time on the master thread basically uh, uh, gets that. We can further uh, uh, split it up. So here execution is, uh, splits into computation, time spent in MPI and OpenMP and again by select like here selecting MPI we quickly can see where the MPI function is happening. If we open up MPI here we see it's uh, management, synchronization, communication. Most time is spent in communication. Again by s clicking on communication we see where it happens uh, and and it goes down and so on. So communication splits up in point to point and uh, collective. It's roughly uh, the same. So point to point splits up now uh, here uh, in late senders and receivers, which are uh, values calculated by the trace analyzer. So here these are situations where the sender and receiver comes too late. Uh, but when you see uh, most of the time is actually spent in, in not in late center, which is even point to point, so there's very little to uh, uh, optimize here again. If you are uh, interested in what this uh, specific metric is uh, meaning, you can uh, use the uh, selected, use the right mouse button and documentation, and then it pops up here a little info window where it ex actually uh, explains what the metrics is meaning and, and, and how it's diagnosed. Okay, um, this is basically uh, showing you all the, the most important uh, features of the cube tool. Yeah, with the three, uh, the three uh, uh, trees, uh, as I said, uh, most things can be done by opening and closing uh, uh, trees. Yeah, by by. Uh, selecting here the level of detail, are we interested in execution time, uh, MPI execution time, communication, just point to point, and then by clicking on it we can see how it's distributed in the call tree and in the system, and by just uh, looking at the high values, yeah, which you typically can easily find by looking at reddish values, you quickly see where the important things are happening. Of course, uh, the the 
tool has many, many, many more features. Yeah, you see here the environment men menu. There's lots of things in in the context uh, menus, but uh, please uh, learn about themselves uh, by looking at the extensive documentation which comes with the Cube tool or uh, by looking at uh, more advanced training modules. Uh, I uh, provide pointers to these uh, in combination of these online training module. Okay, that was our uh, quick demo. Um, if you run into any problems with the Cube tool, feel free to contact uh, the developers. You reach them by using the skalaskat.fz.ulich.de support email because Cube is part of the Skalaska team. So, I hope uh, you enjoyed this uh, little online uh, training module on how to use the Cube tool. Um, enjoy the tool and uh, see you next time.